Okay, hello and uh, good evening. Um, another wonderful live coaching session for the simulator controller software. As um, we have seen in the announcement uh, today, we will talk about track mapping and track automation. Um, a quite new feature available since two weeks now. Um, and there's a lot in there also some some hidden features so it's worth of the uh, coaching session and here it is okay let's start um, first what you have to know is that the uh, track mapping and also the track automation is completely handled by the race spotter race spotter is one of the three race assistants of simulator controller uh, i think you you have already used the race spotter as for the original kind of service he provides spotting telling you the cars nearby telling you the uh, lap time deltas and the the uh, gaps uh, to other cars on the track and so on so uh, he is um, quite knowledgeable about the positions of the car on the track and therefore he is also um, used to create the track maps and uh, also um, to provide the triggers when you reach a specific location on the track. Um, I know that uh, some of you are using other software for the spotter. This is absolutely okay. Um, and you can still do it, um, but if you want to use track mapping um, and, and track automation, at least you have the spotter plugin to be enabled in the co configuration, um, but you can mute the spotter completely so, does, uh, so that, that he does not talk to you so that you can use the other software you want to use for the spotting services. Um, you can do this uh, in simulator setup and simulator configuration as well. Uh, in the next release, um, which is coming this Friday. Um, there is a special preset to mute the spotter so that you can uh, uh, do it uh, without uh, any additional uh, low-level work in the simulator configuration. I will show you this um, in a second. Ah, here it is. So you always had the muted race engineer and the muted race strategies and now the muted race spotter is also available as a preset so that you can enable the race spotter and he's uh, running in the background but he does not talk to you or listen to you okay that's said beforehand um, let's take a look here at the session database so that you can see where you can find the tracks uh, which has been mapped and i will also show you this here in the um, windows explorer the track maps will be created when you are out on the track um, depending on your settings for the learning labs um, i think you know uh, these um, but we can take a look here again. Um, depending on the settings here for the learning labs, um, the spotter will check after the learning labs whether a track map is available for the track you are currently uh, racing on or driving on and if not it will try to create the track map it does this by recording the co coordinates of your car for one lap so it is uh, important that you try to drive as clean as possible during this lap Maybe you will even prefer to create track maps uh, during a practice session, for example, which is absolutely possible. Um, and 
after you have driven this one lap, uh, the track map will be created in the background, which takes a couple of minutes, uh, depending on the size of the track. I've uh, recently uh, created a track map for the endurance course of Le Mans, which is really long. Um, it took about two and a half hours minutes to do this. Uh, once the track map has been created, it will be stored in your database. Under the user, there is a directory named tracks. As always, there are subdirectories for each of your simulators. And here, for example, for ACC, you see here for each track two files. One is named map. The other, it's it's a typical picture file, a PNG file, which uh, in this case looks like this. It's Brands Hatch, okay. And uh, the track map is uh, human readable as uh, most of uh, my data files. So you can also take a look in here as well, but it's not so interesting. It shows you the, the height of the map, uh, the width of the map, the number of recording date recorded data points, the scaling factor, and stuff like that. Nothing you really need to know, but it's uh, good to know that's there, that it's there, and maybe you have a purpose to, to uh, read the map as well, to, to process the coordinates of the track. The normal way to use a track map and see the track map is using the session database. You can, um, for example, here choose your simulator, then you choose a car and a track. And then, depending on whether you have a map for this given, for this chosen track, the automation feature will become available. So you can see the track here. The other way to check whether a track is here is uh, by looking at the administration um, section. Uh, where you can see all the data which is available for Esata Corsa Competizione. And here you see all, your tr all the tracks which has been um, recorded so far. You can, as, uh, as with the other data from the administration section, you can select them, uh, delete them if they are not okay, because maybe you had, had an accident during the reco uh, recording or an off-track, you want to re-record re it, so you can delete it. Or you can make an export package uh, for your for your teammates and so on. Typical usage of the administration area here. Yeah. Um, the other application which shows you track maps um, is the race center. Once you have recorded a track map, um, let's take a look here. Uh, once you have uh, recorded a track map for a given track, um, the, it, the, the overview of the track as well as the positions of all other cars during this uh, race will be made available as a report um, in the race center. Here it is. Um, you can select here the, the track uh, as a report. You will get uh, the track map, uh, the position information. The blue is the current leader. The black one, <laughs> it's me after a crash. Uh, the green one is uh, the car in front of me uh, according to the uh, standings. Uh, and uh, behind me is no one because I'm the last after the crash. Uh, this uh, view in the race center will be updated live uh, during a session as long as you have enabled the team server. Uh, the update frequency is around uh, 10 seconds. Uh, I'm still working on it to make it a little bit faster, but uh, it's more like an overview than a real live track map. There are other tools which are better than that. Okay, so. Um, a short recap. Um, if you don't have a track map, still uh, you can uh, go out to the track, drive a few laps as clean as possible, and after that you will uh, typically uh, see the track map here in the list or in the automation section. Uh, one special um, aspect to mention is 
iRacing. Um, iRacing does not provide any real coordinates, world coordinates or GPS coordinates for the cars on the track. So I had to use a, a different method to record track positions. It's kind of a hack, to, uh, to be honest. Uh, it is uh, available as a description in the algorithm. More or less, I'm I'm taking the jaw angle and the current velocity you have and try to interpolate the uh, track position from the jaw angle and and the velocities. I'm I'm scanning the these values uh, at a fixed frequency of 60 hertz. Uh, so. Uh, if you drive really, really clean, so no drifting, no sliding, no other fancy stuff, which is so funny on a track, you will get a really good recording. I can show you one here. It's, uh, I think, yes, for Uten Park. I think it's, it looks quite okay. So, you, the, but to get a, track map with such a quality in eye racing you really have to dry clean during your recording uh, lap okay that's set uh, up front um, as, uh, as always I, I forgot to mention uh, if you have questions please uh, feel free to jump in um, so uh, I love to answer it directly Okay, um, so as I said, uh, track maps are available in Race Center for, for seeing your position on the track uh, with regards to your opponents and uh, to get an overview of the current race situation. And the other fe feature um, is that you can use the track map um, to automate certain tasks in your car settings. Um, I think most of you already ha have understood that um, different corners on a on a track demand different settings for traction control. Um, I think most of you know that the brake bias is uh, better to move a little bit to the rear if you're braking really straight line but it's better to move it to the front uh, if you are kind of trail braking into a corner to uh, so that the, the rear end is stable here. Uh, you even might uh, want to have different settings of uh, ABS uh, for different corners and so on and so on. Um, typically you do this uh, using any uh, a couple of switches on your steering wheel but uh, using the uh, trap track mapping feature here in uh, in simulator controller um, there is a way now to automate this stuff okay let's take a look here at race room racing experience i prepared something here using this car and this track um, as you see um, automation will only get available if there is a track recorded for the chosen track and if you have chosen a car because the the automation or the settings will be uh, yeah specific for a given car track combination okay here in this case we uh, have the audi r8 on the red bull ring and if we now select here the uh, track automation uh, section we will see the picture of the Red Bull ring and I already prepared two sets of uh, automations but uh, we will start uh, setting up uh, one uh, an automation on, on our own here for, for showcase purposes. What you have to do is uh, you just uh, click on plus which means you will want to create a new automation set. Give it a name let's say uh, coaching um, and then you can set uh, action points here on the track simply by clicking on the location where you want to change one of the settings of your car. 
for example, here. I click on it. And now you have two options. The first one is, um, and this is, to be honest, the one you want to use most, is the so-called hotkey action. Hotkey means that you can um, send keyboard commands to the running simulator. Um, typically, these are the control settings you have uh, configured in your simulator. For example, if you want to increase the traction control, you uh, must have um, um, set a keyboard um, uh, key for uh, this uh, purpose in, in the settings of the simulator. And now you can um, enter this key here as the hotkey you want to be uh, delivered to the simulator in this location. Um, the most easy one will be a simple key, for example, T. And now we have an action point which delivers the hotkey T at this location. Um, but it can be more complex. Click on it, so we will edit. For example, if, you're, if the binding in your simulator is control T, you can use it here as well. And now you, you must know the hotkey syntax, which is, as always, uh, documented in the documentation. Here's a section uh, in the um, installation and configuration um, uh, chapter where you can find all possible hotkey uh, syntax elements. So, it, for example, as a very extensive use here, if you want to have a hotkey control shift alt t, this looks like this control alt shift t. What you can do also is enter more than one hotkey. If you want, for example, send a series of keys to the simulator at this location, uh, please separate the different hotkeys with a vertical bar. And now we enter an another one, which might be W for, let's say, uh, decreasing the... Um, electronic damping at the front wheels. Maybe it's possible with this car. Don't know. So what you can do here, as you, uh, as you see, is uh, sending a, different, a set of uh, a couple of uh, hotkeys, which can get quite complex using the syntax you have here. OK, the other possibility here is you can choose command, which means that you can execute any Windows application or any executable script which is uh, available on your hard disk when you arrive at this location. For example, I want to execute this application here. Just as an example. Um, this can be uh, useful if the uh, interaction with your simulator gets more complex than uh, sending simple hotkeys, simple keyboard commands. Um, I think in most cases the, the hotkey will be enough, but who knows? Who knows? or you want to send some data to SimHub to display uh, it on a, s a connected dashboard, for example. The possibilities are endless here. OK, so we have, uh, have one hotkey. Uh, I, I press cancel, T, uh, name T, uh, which delivers T here at this location. Uh, if we decided that this hotkey is not of any use uh, anymore, I, we can hold down the control key while clicking at this location and you can delete it. Okay, um, that's for the coaching. 
I removed it and now let's take a look here at the uh, pre-installed or uh, pre pre prepared uh, uh, automation uh, set for a dry race which has uh, six different actions on the track and um, we will see later on when we enter race room racing experience that uh, the G stands for decreasing tra traction control while the T stands for increasing traction control. So at uh, this location we want to decrease the traction control by two clicks because we are getting up to a very tight corner and we won't, don't want the traction control to interfere here as much. We will um, go up here by one click, go up here again by one by two clicks. If we want uh, the traction control here at this location even stronger than uh, here because these are high speed corners where we can uh, push on the uh, gas uh, quite early. Here we will decrease it again for uh, this corner and so on. At this uh, uh, two locations we decrease the um, brake bias more to the rear. Here we decrease it because we are braking in a straight line here as, as, as strong as possible. It's a very fast section. You are arriving at uh, full speed here before a, a first gear corner so it's good to have as much brake power as possible and we will increase or, or move the brake bias more to the front here again for the rest of the track. That's the automation set for a dry race here. I uh, created uh, before uh, the coaching session and we have another one which is uh, named wet race. It does not have any uh, changes in the traction control but it still has the uh, moving of the brake bias more to the rear here and uh, moving it again to the front here. Okay, I know race room racing experience does not provide any wet races, but it's uh, only for, for showcase purposes here. Okay, you also see here this little check mark, um, which uh, says that this automation here is the default one which uh, has to be loaded when you enable track automations um, for a given session. So you will always start uh, your track automation with the dry race but you can change it later on. I will show you how to do that. Um, a last thing here to use track automation you still have to enable it using one of the uh, controller actions. So you must dedicate, um, let's say, a, a button on your steering wheel or your button box or your stream deck uh, so that you can enable or disable um, track automations. I can show you it. I st start my simulator controller now. As you see here my... Uh, button box visuals and here is a button named track automation and if I click on this button it will, will become green which may, uh, means track automation are now enabled. If you don't have any uh, button box uh, window representations you still see uh, using the, the um, tray pop-ups uh, which are currently uh, giving a lot of notifications. You can't you can't hear it on Discord. It's uh, binging all the time. Um, so uh, you can still see whether track automations are enabled or disabled um, using the uh, tray notifications. Okay, that this is that. Um, and the last thing uh, before we head out onto the uh, on the track and see this all in action is um, I can I will show you how to 
change the selection between different automation sets while you are out on the track. To do this, um, there is a um, controller scripting capability which you can um, associate with, uh, for example, a button on your steering wheel or a key on your keyboard. Um, and as always, you can configure that uh, using simulator setup or simulator configuration. In this case, I can show you here, I have two custom functions. The one will be triggered when I press the I key on the keyboard, which says select track automation dry race. And when I press the K key on the keyboard, this is also a hotkey, same syntax here. Uh, so I can also write control K, for example, if I want to. Um, then the wet race preset should be selected. Um, okay, so any questions so far? Seems not. So I had explained everything quite well, I think. <laughs> Okay, then uh, we can start race room racing experience. And now for you on the Discord, unfortunately you won't see anything because uh, I will switch n the uh, recording of uh, the OBS to the uh, second screen uh, in a few minutes. In a few seconds, but you can't see it on the stream. But let me think about it. No, I, I can't. I can switch the. Um, the uh, screen sharing in. In Discord, one moment, please. Okay, now you must see the other screen and I switch the recording as well. So now, hopefully everything is okay. I'm not perfect in streaming, I know. So, um, we are at the Red Bull ring. Um, and we are running a race. I will enable track automation here. And now we will head out onto the track. Ah, no, before we go to the track, let me show you one thing here. In the control section, you see here, I have bound the next TC level to the T key and the uh, previous TC level to the G key and for the brake bias it's R and F uh, as we have we are using them here in the uh, automation. Okay so now let's go on the right. Do you see uh, the race room screen? Yes. Okay great. So, uh, track automation, as with most of the other stuff of uh, simulator controller, will start after you have finished your first lap. So we need to drive one lap and then you will see the track automation uh, changing the settings because uh, race room racing experience will show you some, some info field on the left side of the screen. So we need to survive one lap. I will watch the traffic for you. Car at the rear.
Attention left. Still there. Left is clear. So, if everything goes well, we will right see the clear. first automation in a few seconds. There it is. The brake bias has been reduced. Traction control. Car at the rear. Now the brake bias will be increased again. There it is. And the traction control as well. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> but I think we can stop that here. The principle has been, is, is clear now. System works as designed. I switch the recording to the other screen again. Done. It was great working with you again. Top screen and here also. Okay, so um, I think I've covered almost everything for the moment. Um, do you have any questions or recommendations or things to discuss? If not, I have one last thing, so to say. Um, before you use this feature, please, please check uh, whether the racing rules of the event you're participati participating in allows an automation like that. Um, I know from, from different racing leagues uh, that uh, they don't want things like that to be used during their races, but uh, it depends. Um, and if you're racing in a public lobby, for example, for training, nothing matters, so it will not matter, so you can use it. But uh, be, a fair, uh, be fair in the, in the spirit of a sportsman, so uh, don't try to get an advantage by using this feature. It, it maybe it, you will be banned if they um, detect that you are using uh, stuff like that. Okay, if there are no questions remaining, then I will stop the recording and we will see you in the next coaching session. Bye-bye.